Here it is, the Meraki MX-75, and I just got this in, so like we always do on this channel, let's talk about what this box is, do an overview of it, show off the ports on the back, and then let's jump right into the GUI so you guys can actually see some of the features that this thing has in it. So if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button, and if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. So first question, what is a Meraki MX box? And these things come in all different sizes. I have a 75 in my hand here, but they go all the way up to an MX450, which is more of a data center appliance. But back to the original question, what is an MX? And it's Meraki's security gateway box. So this thing is a full-fledged firewall, can do advanced threat analytics. It can be a router. Yes, this thing can route as well. Particular models have different variations of switch ports on the back. Um, this one actually even has PoE ports on the back of here as well. This can do SD-WAN. Some of these can do wireless. And it's also a VPN terminator. So yes, you can terminate Cisco AnyConnect or Secure Client, whatever they're calling it now. And it can also do IPsec connections out to other branch offices. Okay, so let's talk about the MX-75 and why I specifically wanted to review this box. And the reason was because this is the first box from Meraki at this price point, at this size, that supports a gigabit per second. And why I think that's important, because I think that's going to be the new standard going forward. If you've got a small branch office you're opening up, or even a medium-sized branch office, you know, Meraki designed this to go up to about 200 users. Really, that gig is kind of that standard. Even if you're not using a full gig today, a lot of people say, well, you know, in the next two, three, five years, I could see us going up to a gig. So I think, again, this is probably your starting point for that. Now, I will point out here that if you do decide to turn on a lot of the advanced features on here from a security perspective, that throughput does go down just a little bit, um, down to 750 megabits per second, but that's still really good for this size of a box. And I also like this box because of the actual physical size of it. It's really thin. It's maybe an inch wide by, I don't know, a foot, maybe 14 inches. Uh, lengthwise here so you can really put this thing anywhere you don't have to have a huge rack of equipment and get this thing mounted in it's super light and kind of does what you need it to do so that's a quick overview of what this box is I'm gonna zoom in now so we can take a look at the ports on the back so we flip this thing around we're gonna take a look at the ports here we're gonna start on this side and kind of work our way over the first thing you're gonna notice over here is a USB port this can be used for cellular modem backup if you needed a tertiary backup out of this thing next to it is our WAM ports and the important thing to note here like a lot of other boxes we do have an SFP port but it's actually paired with internet port 2 here, this, this RJ45 port. So if you're going to use this port, this port will be disabled. And if you're going to use this port, this port is going to be disabled. So just make sure you keep that in mind. It does show uh, internet 1, 2, and 3. These cannot all three be active at the same time. You can only have two active at the same time. So either the SFP and internet 3 or internet 2 and 3 together. Again, just keep that in mind. Then working our way over here, we have 10 other RJ45 ports. The first eight here, these are your regular RJ45 one gig connection ports. And then here, ports 12 and 13 are your PoE ports. So if you do have a small office and you're really just looking to put one box in, you've got a couple computers, maybe a couple phones, really, really nice box for that there. And then the last port here, is going to be your power port. So pretty simple, um, but this box does pack a ton of punch in terms of features and what you're able to do in it. And before we jump into the GUI of this box, I think it's really important to talk about the license levels of the MX boxes so you guys get a good understanding of that. And I'll post this link in the description below. But essentially, there's three different license options here, good, better, and best. The first one is going to be enterprise, advanced, and then advanced security, and then lastly, secure SD-WAN plus. Now, you only need to pick one of these. So if you pick secure SD-WAN plus, it's going to have everything that advanced security had in it and enterprise had in it as well. So just pick whichever one works best for you here. Now, you can go down the, the checkboxes here to take a look at all the features. And if we take a look at advanced security, 
that's where we start getting into more things like content filtering, web search filtering, AMP, you know, all that is going to be on there. And then once we get into the SD-WAN plus options, then you get some really cool stuff with, with the Meraki Insights where you can take a look at application health, uh, voice over IP health analytics and statistics. You also have some smart breakout features here. So if you're going to be doing direct internet access out of your site, but you want to tunnel everything back except for maybe Microsoft Office 365, you can you can do that right out of here with the smart breakout. Um, the SD, SD internet feature, this is kind of cool too. This is a little bit newer on these boxes as well. But essentially that lets you go out to your cloud services, again, like Office 365, and select the best path for it. The Meraki MX box will take a look at different paths, either internet connection one or internet connection two, and try to place it on the, the best available path at that specific time. So those are the different license levels. Again, I'll have this link in the description if you guys wanna take a look at it in more detail. And let's jump into the GUI. Okay, so we just jumped into the Meraki dashboard and I'm actually gonna show off an MX84 that's already been set up and has a lot more data than the new box that I have. So we're gonna take a look at this, but they're all gonna be really identical in terms of features and everything that you can do, um, except for some of these are gonna have different port configurations and be able to do different speeds, kind of like we talked about. So on this MX84 here, you know, the first thing here, I'm in security and SD-WAN and under appliance status, and we're taking a look at what's up and what's down or what's plugged in and not plugged in. And the first thing you see is my, I do have my dual internet connections here plugged in, they're both live. And I've got a couple other ports plugged in here as well. And then the rest would be blank. So I can take a look here at how much usage we have. We could take a look at WAN 1 is getting, you know, basically utilized the most or all of it. And nothing really coming out of WAN 2 at this point. But you can take a look at your trend of data usage over the last day or however long you want to set it. You can even go all the way back to the last month if we wanted to. So here we could take a look at over the last month how much bandwidth we actually were using and what was our peak. And it looks like our peak was around June 9th there where we utilized uh, maybe like two megabits per second or so. So that's all in here. All your information about, about your Meraki MX box is gonna be on the left side here, including what version of code and everything you're running and the configuration, everything is up to date. A couple other features we'll point out here. So we're gonna go under monitoring. Uh, if you did wanna do some configuration changes, you could go under configure here. And this is where you would go in and configure things like SD-WAN or client VPN or set up your firewall rules. You know, all that is built into here. Uh, let's show off real quick threat protection just to show you guys how easy it is to set up some of these things. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on threat protection. And up here at the top, if you want to turn on things like advanced malware protection or AMP, it's a simple drop down. Click and enable it. If you want to enable threat grid, again, click and enable it. And then IPS, IDS right there. You can enable detection or you can also enable prevention right there. If I go back under security and SD-WAN, we can take a look at some VPN status here. So if we have connections out to other locations via IPSec, those connections are also be able to view right here. There's a nice chart kind of showing where everything is going. And then you get the table underneath that showing all the connections and everything that's out there. Now we talked a little bit about insights. So I did want to show this off and you've got your web application health insights right there. We also have VoIP health insights, which I'm going to click on there just to show how powerful this is. And you can take a look and this is going to show some of the VoIP calls that are going on and if we had any issues. So you can take a look that this call right here, mean, mean opinion score or the MOS score was only a 3.9. And it takes a, if we take a look here, we could see that there was actually some red portions of this call. So if we click in on it, um, we could actually even run a trace route if we wanted to on this and that'll take a second to run. But we can take a look at and say, oh, you know, there definitely is some jitter going on with this call. You could take a look at that, you know, when we start hitting the jitter, we, take, we see that our mean opinion score is also dipping down. So that's probably what's related there. And we could also take a look and see some high latency, you know, relatively around the same times there where the peaks and the valleys are in these different charts. 
If I go back up to my trace route that I ran, we can actually see on a hop by hop basis if anything looks out of the ordinary. And right now when we're running it, uh, we're not seeing any loss, but over time, if we were running that, we'd probably see the same thing that we're, we're showing here at different times of the day. We're getting some, some different loss. So really nice tool. Someone calls up and says, hey, I had a very poor experience with my phone. You can actually come in here and you can take a look at what the loss was uh, or you know, the mean opinion score or the latency for that phone call. So guys, that's it in a nutshell. Just really wanted to go over some of the high level features and functions of this thing and show off the GUI a little bit here. Again, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you guys have any questions, post below and I will get back to you. Thanks a lot.